everybody, welcome to the Black Sheep Props channel. I'm Steve, and normally I'm here to teach you the tips, tools, techniques, and materials for building your very own super cool EVA foam props. But, we're not going to do that this time. This time we're going to do something different. We're going to take a tour of the shop. Alright, here we go. That's the space right there. That's the whole thing. We're about, I don't know, 14 feet by about 7 feet and uh, takes up half the garage. We've got all of our shelves in the back for our supplies. We've got a uh, super simple layout. We've got all of our lights and our tripods set up. We've got an, two tables set up in the shape of an L. That way we can use the big table to work at. We can use the small table for the big power tools. And like I said, a bunch of shelving for all the supplies that you're gonna use. It's super convenient to have a garage. And, uh, but this is more than enough space to build anything you want. Um, so that's it. That's behind the camera. Okay, now this is the view that you see us build everything from, from the above view. This is the workspace. Let's take a look at how we set it up. All right, right here on the small mat next to me is where I keep my camera and my battery case. I keep my extra pieces of foam, I keep my X-Acto blades, and I keep all the tools that I use most often. The box cutter, the silver sharpie, the X-Acto knife, the diamond sharpener for my box cutter, the scissors, and the most important thing, the remote to the fan, because we got to have wind blowing across us, and we have our cup for our sanding sticks. So. And of course, right in front, contact cement, container for used blades, and box of kick butt black pearl gloves. And over on this side, you can lay this out any way you want, but over on this side I have my heat gun, my Dremel, my brush, my short ruler, and my little brass rod for popping out rivets. And I leave this here all the time, it always goes on this side. But again, you can set this up any way you want. But I have the big mat in the middle for all my work, and I have small mats on both ends for keeping the tools that I use all the time that I have to have in quick reach. Okay, now when you hear us say we're gonna move over to the band saw or the scroll saw or the drill press, that's it right there on this smaller table that makes up our L shape. We're usually sitting right here, and the boom up here is filming us. We just get up and walk around the table, and we come over to this station over here. That's just a simple folding table. All right, real easy. You can walk right up to the bandsaw if you want to use it. Easy. Spin right around to here. Scroll saw. You can stand right in front of it. And the drill press. So that's it. One little table. And uh, like I said, we just get up. We walk around the table and come over to here. We've got plenty of room. Real convenient. Okay, the lights are super easy. We've got four lights. We've got two little battery-operated lights, which are these little guys on the end right here and right here. All right, now we use those for when we're filming the intro and the ending to each video. They're battery-operated because we only need to use them for a minute or two at a time, which is cool. And now the big lights, the big LEDs, we use for when we're actually building. And those are electric, so we can turn these on and we can let them run for as long as we want. We can film out here for nine hours and we don't run out of battery, and they're really bright. So we just come in, and those lights flood the table for when we're filming. Now we have the garage door open right now, so you're not really seeing how bright the lights are, but that's it. We've got four lights, two little battery-operated lights, and two big... AC LED lights and what we do too is we have the legs of the tripods marked on the floor so in case we hit one and move it we can put it right back to where we have to put it and that's it okay and now the two camera angles real easy too we have two camera angles we have the tripod right in front of us right there that you usually see when we do the intro and the outro for a video and that's the tripod standing right in front of me that's also the same tripod that we'll take and we'll move around to the bandsaw and the scroll saw when we want to show you the up-close business of that happening. 
So straight on for the intro and we can move that tripod over to the table with the power tools when we want to focus on that. All right, and that's obviously the boom that hangs above us so we can get everything that's happening during the build. So that's it, two simple camera angles. Straight ahead, pointing back at us for the introduction and the ending to each video, and the kick butt boom that hangs above us and gets all the action right here. Okay, and obviously we have the whole wall of shelves. All right, so depending on how many supplies you have, just get the shelves. They're pretty cheap. We get them from our local Lowe's or Home Depot. And uh, this basically holds everything. So the most important stuff that I have to get to a million times every build stays right on the table in front of us. But the rest of the supplies can all go on the shelving behind us. All right, here we go. Real simple stuff. You can set this up any way you want, but we just buy a lot of extra bins. That way we can keep extra foam pieces in our bins. We keep thicker foam in this bin. We've got our sheets of three millimeter. Uh, we keep a lot of extra pieces of cardboard around for when we're uh, super gluing or when we're mixing paint up. And uh, every time you get boxes in the mail, just cut the pieces up, keep them because you're always going to use them. And uh, we've got all of our plasti dip. We've got a bunch of our tape and our shaping tools here. We've got a bunch of different sized styrofoam balls for when we're heat shaping our foam. We've got our rolls of tape regular tape, double stick tape, painter's tape, um, and again, you can set this up any way you want. All right, real easy stuff. We've got our respirator for when we're painting. We've got an extra respirator. We've got extra dust masks. We've got all of our different acrylic paints, the large ones and the small ones. We've got our plastic bin that we keep all of our brushes in. And again, you can set this up any way you want. It's really handy to buy a lot of cool plastic bins for extra foam and for tools. And then on the bottom shelf, we've got a toolbox, we've got a ratchet set, we've got a bunch of our tools down here. And we've got these banker's boxes down here for the smaller props. So as we finish the smaller props, we put paper towel around them and we put them in boxes. We've got boxes all through the storage room and the garage with all the props we've built. Uh, so that's it. I use the bottom shelf for props that are finished and then just randomly set it up the way it's convenient for you on every other shelf. Okay, and like we said, down here at the bottom we've got banker's boxes for our finished foam pieces. And then up on top of there we keep our big bolt cutters, we keep extra bandsaw blades. Um, and then up on this shelf right here, this is where we have all of our drilling stuff. We have our Forstner bits for when we need to poke a hole through some foam. We've got our chargeable drill. We've got a bunch of different drill bits. We've got chargers for our batteries. And this is all the area where we keep our drill stuff for when we got to go through foam. Um, and then again, like we said, a lot of foam bins. Now this foam bin <laughs> is where our black sheepskin is capped. That's right. When we do the beginnings to the videos, the beginning and the ending, and we have the big sheepskin hanging behind us, um, it's kept right in here. Dust free. And uh, on top of that, we've got a bag full of our neoprene rubber cords, a lot of different dimensions. We've got our circle guides and our triangle. Again, this is all the stuff we have to be able to reach quickly so we can just turn around and grab it, but it's not the stuff that you deal with all the time. That's stuff we keep on the table. Okay, and up here the same thing. Extra bins to hold our foam. The first bin we showed keeps the thicker extra pieces. This keeps the thinner extra pieces, and man, you use it. It totally comes in handy. And then we've got a smaller bin over here that holds all of our smaller pieces of our foam dowels. The real tall pieces of foam dowel, we just stand right over here on the side. So we've got the tall pieces standing right here, the cut pieces standing right here. Okay, now this shelf is all of our spray paints. Tons of spray paints. Um, as you get them and you use them, when you have a lot left over, you just keep them close by. As they empty out, you toss them. When you need a new one, you go get a new one. And this is all of our spray paints. And of course, right over here, we've got CDs and our little CD player with all the killer jams for when we're building when we're not filming, that is. 
Uh, and we keep over here our Bestine rubber cement thinner for when we need to thin our contact cement and clean our brush out. And back here we keep our extra barge. So again, all of the stuff that goes on the shelves is set up however you want it to conveniently be able to get to it, but it's not the, the primary stuff. The primary stuff stays on the table. And yes, that's right, coffee or die. Okay, and up on the top is where we keep all of our rolls of our funnel. Now we just bought some really simple Velcro strap that you can buy at any Staples or Office Depot, and we have our rolls of foam up here at the top, and then we just put a little strap around it to keep it together. And we've got all of our thicknesses up here. We've got two millimeter, four millimeter, six, 10, 12, and a little bit of 18. So here's all of our rolls. And again, this is behind us. It's pretty convenient to get to. Uh, we don't want to wrap it too tight, because if you wrap the thicker stuff too tight, when you go to open it, it'll, it'll be curved a little bit. You can get rid of that, but you try to keep it rolled up, but lightly rolled up. Okay, now up here behind our big 100 is where we keep all of our really thick foams. Check it out. We stand them up here like this, just like a library. We've got, okay, we've got three quarter, we've got an inch, we've got an inch and a half, we've got two inch, and we just keep them standing here in the back. Okay, and there obviously is our garbage can, which fills up super fast, and our little tool caddy with a bunch of drawers in it. A lot of cool stuff in there. Okay, here we go, on the top, real easy stuff. We've got our acid brushes for when we need to do our little scratch marks. We've got multiple super glues. We've got replacement brushes for our contact cement, and all of our different Dremel bits, and then we just fill the drawers up with all the stuff that you use all the time. We've got our stir sticks for when we're mixing up our contact cement. We've got all of our brass tubes. We've got a bunch of our modeling tapes for when we're masking off. All right, in this drawer we've got our small little snips for when we're doing metal supports and it's the thinner stuff. We can use this to, to trim it off. We've got a couple different hole punches in here. We've got our our pliers for when we're bending the inner supports. All right, in here we've got a bunch of little containers. We've got googly eyes. We've got extra wood burner tips. We've got extra foam rivets. We've got several different thicknesses of PVC pipe for when we need to wrap sandpaper around it to sand a curved area. Our brush drawer, which is full of sponge brushes, regular brushes, and a bunch of these real cheap chip brushes for when we use our mud wash on stuff. And down in here, we've got our hot glue gun extra hot glue. We've got a bunch of different thicknesses of interesting little metal rods that we can use for support as we need them. And down here we've got some extra sandpaper sheets. We've got some extra styrofoam balls for heat shaping and a couple other little things in there that we might need. Maybe some little jewels or gems or stuff. Um, Alright, that's it. The tool caddy. Gotta have one. Super handy. Okay, now here is our rack of plans. That's right, look at that. There's like 35 or 40 more sets of plans. <laughs> yeah. So I bought it, really cheap little rack for holding blueprints and stuff like that. And when I print out, uh, I have a huge printer at work. So I'm able to draw my plans full size, print them out on a huge printer, roll up the prints, and stack them all in here, keeping them nice and neat. Um, and of course, if you get a template, it's broken up into sections on eight and a half by 11 paper, but it's the exact same templates as these, just broken into pieces so you can print them on a small little office printer. So that's it, the rack of awesomeness. This is the stuff that's coming soon. Well, maybe not so soon, but uh, we've got years ahead, man. It's gonna be good. Okay, what those are is those are finished props. 
We've got the smaller ones down here on the bottom of the shelf that hold smaller props, and then we've got these two bigger boxes for like medium-sized props that are finished, and uh, then we've got even bigger boxes for the taller stuff. All right, and there in the corner is the fan. Super important. We use this to blow fumes out of our face. It's set up just to the left of me, so when I'm wood burning or something like that, uh, this keeps the fumes blowing away from me. And we need this also to stay cool because sometimes it gets super hot in the garage and it's nasty and humid down here and I hate it. I wish I lived in Minnesota where it wasn't miserable and humid and nasty and it got uh, colder than 70 degrees once in a while. But there you go, there's the fan. Gotta have it. Helps you stay cool and helps blow fumes out of your face. Okay, that was pretty much everything, so... All right, there it was. Tiny little tour of our tiny little shop behind the scenes. Um, and listen, I'm by no means an expert. I'm just doing this on the fly. You can set things up any way you want. You can arrange your tables any way you want. Um, this is just the way that I did it. If it helps you, great. Maybe it'll inspire you to do something else, to set your tables up a different way, to create a better flow. Um, that's about it. Little look at a little shop. Um, you don't need a whole lot of room to work. Uh, you probably don't even need as much room as I have. As long as you have a big table to work on, you're good to go. You can start right there. Um, start small, and as you get the ability to expand, then expand. Um, no rules, and it's your show. You do it how you want it. But uh, that was it. That was a little look behind the scenes at Black Sheep Props. Hope you liked it. If you did, give us a like, share us with a friend, and subscribe to this channel. And together, we're going to go step by step through a lot more super cool builds so that you get the props you deserve. Thanks for coming. See you next time.